I'm in Cluj-Napoca, Romania, and my guest today is Ervin Dirksen. Ervin, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And thanks for being on my show. It's a pleasure. Yeah. What, what do you do? I do primarily infrastructure projects like Office 365, Windows 10, Office 20, 2016 deployments. Mm -hmm. And as a sort of secondary business or hobby, I do presentation skills and PowerPoint designing skills and that kind of stuff. Oh, excellent. You did uh, some presentation on presentations here at IT yes. Camp, right? Today I had a session about power tips for PowerPoint. <laughs> it's so very meta to be presenting yeah, nice. about presenting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's odd, but it's nice. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by the... Um, this whole deployment thing because it's, it changes so much and there's so much more involved than it sounds like. I, like I have a computer at home and I download an MSI file or a setup.exe and run it mm -hmm. and things just work. But yeah. in enterprises, that's so much harder. Yeah, that's true. There are a lot of things happening. There are a lot of releases coming very rapidly after mm -hmm. each other and you see that companies are having trouble sometimes to keep it up to date and to mm -hmm keep up with the tempo. Right. Uh, you mentioned something that I wasn't familiar with. You said, uh, was it click to run? You mean Office 2016 uh, click to run? Yeah, we were yeah. talking about that earlier. What, yeah, true. T tell me about that. Well, for Office, we, we've, used to, we've been used to deploying MSI applications for, the, let's say, the last 20 years. Okay, and that's just an MSI file that we run and then yes. maybe calls setup.exe and yes, exactly. downloads all the dependencies, whatever it has to do. And that's very well known. Yeah. But uh, integration with the cloud, especially with 365, requires us to update applications at a much faster pace. Okay, we're talking about Office 365. Yeah, so if you want to keep up with 365, especially the interface, then it's, it's very nice to have your Office version up to date as well. Okay. So that's why they introduced a click-to-run mechanism hmm. that enables you to deploy and update Office much faster. All right. Uh, what, now, what does click-to-run do? Is, it a, is that a an executable that runs on your local desktop, or what is that? Well, what actually happens is that you only download a very small component, okay. and then you can decide whether to retrieve the software from the cloud, from the Microsoft cloud, okay. or from an internal source if you are an enterprise, and if you want to have full control about versioning and updates and that kind of stuff. When you say the software, are you talking about the install bits for your Yeah, it's just another method of installation. Okay. It's more flexible and faster. Okay, and this is, um, is this something you have to decide when you initially install Office? Yes. Okay. So yeah. You can, of course, if you want to migrate to click to run and you have already deployed Office 2016 MSI, you can remove it. Hmm. You have to put some effort in it to get it properly removed. Uh, but Microsoft uh, gives you some scripts. Hmm. It's called a scrub script that actually scrubs, uh, scrubs all the old Office components from your system oh. and then deploy a fresh installation of click to run And that's what we should do, right? Yeah, that's highly recommended because I've seen lots of issues when you just use the update mechanism that it's included in the setup. It's, it's recommended to use a scrubbing script which is provided by Microsoft and then uh, do the installation. Hmm, okay. When in enterprises, uh, one big issue you have is authentication, right? You just uh, Not just anybody can install just about any application. Does this help with that? Yeah, the click-to-run version needs licensing activation okay. because in the past when you install MSI, you just license a workstation and no matter who logs on at that workstation can use the software, okay. can start Office. With click-to-run, you need a license based on a user. Oh, okay. So that means that every user account that logs onto that system requires a license to be able to use the click-to-run Office. I didn't realize that. So Microsoft has changed their licensing model for Office. Yeah, because click-to-run is part of the 365 subscription. Okay. If you have the E3 or E5 licenses. Uh, and that's a big issue because companies are not aware of that. Right. So they just expect you just install Office and that's it. No, so they may not be compliant without realizing it. Yes. And now, in the past, I mean, if you install let's say 1,000 copies and you have 900 licenses, nothing will happen, you're just not compliant. Right. But if you do that today, you have 1,000 users and 900 licenses, you just cannot use Office. If you have no license, you will get a message, I'm sorry, you have no license, oh, you can so only... Now that's being controlled by Microsoft. Yes. Uh, and it's based on your, your login credentials, right? Yeah, it's based on your 
actually your Azure Azure AD credentials. Okay, so everybody has to have an Azure AD credential to yes. use Office 365 and therefore also to use this uh, click and to run. The, the advantage for the end user is that they can install Office on five devices. I see, yeah. That's so that's that's nice. an advantage. Yeah, they have a license. For, uh, it's probably for your phone as well, right? That's yeah, they can use it on the phone. Uh, there is uh, a Mac version, which okay. is quite popular. Yeah, a lot and of people have a desktop and a laptop as they, yeah. as like a salesperson has to go on the road a lot. And they can install it at home. So I did some project for a school in the Netherlands and you can offer that as a sort of present for your end user. You say, well, we migrate to a new office version and you can install four or five copies at home okay. based on your credentials from the company. That, that's, people like that. Um, that's, uh, oh, so you credentials for the company, so that means that they have to, when they install it at home, do they have to log in with their company credentials? Yes. How's, what is that experience like? They must have a VPN then in order to use it at home? No, you can log on in two different ways. If you're on-premises, you tend to configure single sign-on. That means you log on to your Windows desktop and the credentials will be automatically transferred to 365. So you will have a single sign-on experience. Okay. You need ADFS for that. And if you're at home, you just log on directly to Azure AD. So if you synchronize the passwords and the accounts, hmm. people can just log on from home like they log on to Webmail, for example. Oh, okay. Um, is, are there any issues with, um, well, I guess I should start, you, you said that there's the issue with staying with the MSI installed version of Office means that you're not going to get updates, right? The updates are all going to this click run version of Office, right? Yeah, you will get security updates and bug fixes, That that's the same, Okay. but click to run receives also feature updates. Ah. So that means if you would deploy an MSI right now, you will be set back in functionality okay. back in May 2015. So that's three uh, years. Uh, three years, and as time goes yeah. on, that, that, that feature gap is going to be yeah. more and more significant. Um, so it's it's definitely an advantage to using the click once for or click to run version of it. Um, are there any issues with click to run? Yes, unfortunately, we have seen some compatibility issues with some applications that use old technology to integrate with Office. Sometimes it just doesn't work with a click to run version. Most of the time you can find a solution, but it takes you some effort. But there are some issues with click to run because it's an other type of installation. So mm -hmm. you have to test your applications, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's interesting. It's a different type of installation, but once it's installed, it's installed. It seems like the installation shouldn't be a factor in how the software itself runs. Yeah. You're saying I, it is. I <laughs> think Microsoft just canceled some all technologies that companies are not supposed to use anyway. <laughs> but okay. I mean, we all know how it works with older applications or critical applications that have been there for ages. Okay. And if they don't work, the company will have an issue. Uh, so you can find a solution using FV or something like that. Yeah. Or in the ultimate case, you can still deploy Office 2016 MSI, but I would not recommend that because you will be set back three years okay, well, in features. Yeah, I see that. So then that's that's not uncommon. As, as new versions of software come out, they um, particularly things with APIs, like Office has a lot of APIs that mm -hmm. you can automate it, which is what software integrators will do. Sometimes those APIs break over time. They just yeah. change and they, they get, with Microsoft usually it's one version where it's deprecated, where you get a warning, and then the next version where it actually breaks. Yes, but I think also with the I always say to customers when you enter the cloud or when you start using the cloud, you will, ent you will enter a, a, a period of constant innovation, of constant change. Uh -huh. So for example, 365 changes the interface for sharing documents and to uh, have comments with others and chats and that kind of stuff. And Office has to keep up with it uh -huh. just to have the same experience and the same interface. Mm -hmm. Because else you would have an old interface in Office and a new interface online. It's sure. For end users that's confusing. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's ultimately I think that's a good thing. And you're, like I said, there, there is a cost as as we're upgrading more quickly. Is that things do change? But that's that's there's some stress involved in that, and things do break. But um, this is uh, it used to be things broke every three years, and they broke a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and now I, they're broken a little bit every month or so. I <laughs> believe that if in the past we are used to taking big steps at a time. Right. For example, I'm working in a hospital now to upgrade them to Office 2016 click to run and they currently they run Office 2010. So they mm. they make one big jump in eight years. Right. And 
That's not next common to have seen that inter big enterprises a lot. Yes, and the same you have with Windows 7. Yep. If they migrate to Windows 10, that's a big step. But if you go from Windows 10 1709 to 1802 or 1803, okay. that will be much smaller steps. So I think the risks are actually lower. Uh, okay. But the first step is to to get to that model. That's where the, you see your customers have the most pain, is in that first step. Yeah, because people see, let's say, operating system migration or office migration, they see it as one project mm -hmm. that is finished at some point, uh -huh. and then they can reside for four, five, six years. Uh, and now that's no longer true. That's now no longer true. it's an ongoing true. process. I think if companies are, are going to the cloud and, mm -hmm. and use the new Windows 10 and Office 2016 release cycle, they have to change the way they deploy things and they have to change the IT organization. Right. Uh, for people that are in charge of uh, deployment for their organizations, what's some good resources they can go to learn about how to do this, what the issues are, especially around office? Well, I think there are more resources than ever available on the internet. I mean, you have tons of videos, Microsoft Academy, you have a good support sites, support.office.com. You can find so many resources. The only issue is, I think, lack of knowledge sometimes but also lack of time because people are on uh, they have to accomplish many things in short time and don't take the time to to evaluate what what the implications is when going to the cloud i mean management says we have to go to the cloud just fix it right and they have no clue of what what they are starting <laughs> i've seen companies that have been migrated or in the process of migrating to 365 and the management administration is no is not even taken care of right. so they already run in production but management is still the question who manages this right. is this the exchange admin or is there somebody else and i say well you should find out very quickly because if it evolves you have to know what's coming mm -hmm. somebody has to re be responsible for that right. do you have an online presence yes if you google me you will probably find some presentations and stuff and uh, I think the best way to connect to me is go to my website, which is dirkit.nl. That's that's my own company. Okay, and that's and all in Dutch, right? That's most of it is in Dutch, okay. and I sometimes I post some things in English on LinkedIn, but I should do more in English. But I have no time. That's the issue. I have a confession to make. I I don't speak Dutch. <laughs> I already <laughs> expected that. <laughs> Evan, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Okay, this show is about uh, technology and friends and what is very nice to know is that we are here in Romania in a beautiful location. Uh, it's my second time here this year and this is how you can see that technology can make friends because you meet other speakers, you meet other participants and well that's, that's very cool. That's technology and friends joined together in one conference and in this show. <laughs>